Yeah, I've been to Boston yeah, ever so since I yeah, went yeah, to college. So. Yeah, my husband yeah. loves lobster. <laughs> okay. Welcome to Behind the Pages. Janice Ellis is with us today. Janice is here to talk about From Liberty to Magnolia. This is a memoir about her childhood growing up in rural Mississippi. Um, where, as the civil rights movement was gaining momentum and the women's uh, movement was just beginning. Janice has worked as an executive all of her adult career. She's worked in government. She has run her own marketing and owned and run her own marketing firm. Uh, she ha uh, has been the CEO and president of a child advocacy group. And, um, and then at this point in her life, she has decided to write about the challenges that faced her as she grew up. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, we're very happy for you to be here. And your book is just very, very moving. Um, the, your, the strengths of you as a person comes out on the very first page. Wow. Thank you. Um, so you mentioned in your prologue that the women uh, that the civil rights movement um, was was gaining momentum. The women's rights, the women's movement was also gaining strength. You know, one for prior to the other. So, as so, how have you ever been uh, felt to um, that you needed to identify with one group or the other? Well, I think as a young adult, mm -hmm. I probably identified more with the civil rights movement mm -hmm. because as a child growing up, I saw firsthand mm -hmm. um, the impact of uh, racism, oppression. Mm -hmm. uh, in Mississippi yes. where my dad's farm was. And my dad was a member of the NAACP mm -hmm. and was very instrumental at that time in getting blacks to vote. Mm -hmm. And so I would say, and, 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 then, and then of course when I went to college, yes. um, uh, the civil rights demonstrations were very active in Jackson, mm -hmm. Mississippi. You know, there were demonstrations all over, but there were a number of things yeah. that happened in my early um, teenage years mm -hmm. that were impactful. Mm -hmm. uh, the assassinations, say, of Mega Edwards, mm -hmm. uh, the killing of the three civil rights workers. Mm -hmm. um, and Emmett Till had been killed some mm -hmm. years before when I was a, a younger child. Mm -hmm. But all of those things were happening within a hundred mile radius of mm -hmm. my dad's farm. Yeah. And so I felt the impact of being black mm -hmm. and the and the uh, impact of socially of what needed to occur mm -hmm. and that probably went on through my first uh, years of college. Mm -hmm. I started college at, in Tulu College mm -hmm. which was very active. It actually was the headquarters for Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. Stokely Carmichael and those mm -hmm. when they would come mm -hmm. to organize demonstrations in Jackson. Mm -hmm. And then I left Tulu College to help further integrate mm -hmm. a predominantly white college, Millsaps College. Mm -hmm. So I think the civil rights movement impacted me early yes. uh, in my life and mm -hmm. my um, early adulthood. Mm -hmm. Now you lived in a tiny little town um, or area, I should say. Yes. You know, between two towns that were not very big towns anyway. No. Uh, so, at what point in your childhood do you remember becoming aware of the civil rights movement? Uh, I was about, in terms of the civil rights movement, yeah. about eleven, mm -hmm. um, and my mom, I, I, I was. Uh, we got a television mm -hmm. <laughs> when I was about 11 years old. Uh -huh. And so she was watching, you know, the news and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so in 1963 was when the demonstrations occurred in Jackson, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And one of them was pretty, pretty violent. It made yeah. national news. Mm -hmm. And so um, that was there, but kind of in the back of my mind. Right. I, it was, I was about 14 years old before I really realized mm -hmm. the fear yeah. and all of that that was surrounding the movement. Mm -hmm. One day my mom sent me to um, the out to the edge of the road. Mm -hmm. my, my dad's farm was about two city blocks away from the main Liberty Magnolia Road mm -hmm. to get stamps from the mailman. And mm -hmm. so he asked me what was I going to do yeah. when I uh, graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. I was about a sophomore then getting yeah. ready to think of college because I had yeah. a professor, a teacher rather, in high school who thought I could. Mm -hmm. And he said, 
what are you going to do? And I said, I'm going to Tougaloo mm -hmm. in college. I'm trying to go to Tougaloo. And I went home and I told my mom, Yeah. and she became hysterical mm -hmm. because she thought, oh my God, you told him that. They're going to think we're uppity black people and mm -hmm. your debt will have problems getting credit in the city. So mm -hmm. I, I, I began to feel firsthand, yeah. you know, the impact of being even associated with the mm -hmm. civil rights, yes, indirectly. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't right. going there to demonstrate. I was yeah. going there to get an education. Yes, but you were naive enough to not realize yet that that wouldn't necessarily be well received. No. I mean, you know, sort of when, when we're, we're children and, you know, especially growing up in a family that's encouraging education, you know, and furthering yourself, I think as a child you often assume everybody wants the same for all children yes. and it turned out that was not, not the, the case. case. Yeah. And you know even when the Klan burned crosses on my dad's lawn for mm -hmm. registering people to vote, mm -hmm. I was younger yeah. and I just didn't make the association mm -hmm. that, I, that I should be very careful about what I said. Yes. Um, my parents uh, thankfully did not around the dinner table tell us how to perceive white people. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the main concern was be careful, mm -hmm. you know, be respectful, mm -hmm. don't get hurt. And yes. I'm sure my mom had, you know, thoughts of Emmett Till. That was pretty yeah. known then. Yeah. Um, but but that was, it wasn't a discussion about what the civil rights movement meant at all. Right. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, um, I remember you talking in the book about an incident when you were uh, young where your mom sent you into the store to buy a her yes. candy bar. Do you want to yes. tell us about that? Yes. And her I, was, I was about 13, mm -hmm. 13 at that time, and my mom sent me in to the Five and Dime store mm -hmm. to get a baby Ruth. Yeah. She gave me a dollar. Yeah. So I paid for the candy bar, and mm -hmm. I held my hand yeah. for the change. And the clerk, who was maybe four or five years older than I was, 18 mm -hmm. or 19, yeah. looked at me and sort of slammed the change on the counter. Well, I didn't know whether or not to be hurt or, mm -hmm. or angry. Right. And so I went back to the car and I asked my mom for a quarter mm -hmm. to get bubble gum. And I went back into the store, a nickel's worth of bubble gum. <laughs> mm -hmm. I went back into the store Obviously, yeah. and got the gum and mm -hmm. she handed her hand out for the quarter mm -hmm. and I put it on the counter and looked at her with a little smile mm -hmm. and she was clearly startled by it yeah. but I didn't hold my hand out for the change mm -hmm. she put the change on the counter mm -hmm. I go back into the car and my mom said oh I didn't know you like bubble gum mm. we never buy bubble gum yeah. and I told her what had happened mm -hmm. and she was very upset. Yeah. Not at the clerk. No. At me. She was worried about your safety. Yes. Yeah. She was worried about my safety. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I remember uh, another incident when we went into town and my mom and dad went into the laundry mat mm -hmm. to get a dress on a Saturday mm -hmm. so that she could wear it to church the following Sunday. And as they were coming out of the laundry, two little white boys spat at them. Mm -hmm. And my mom and dad just rushed to the car mm -hmm. and wouldn't encounter wouldn't mm -hmm. you know right the boys at all so yeah yeah um, because it was all a process and there was really no protection from from you know from no. anyone if, if a dispute broke out no none yeah. and and you know that that was clear as a young teenager if uh, my mom and I often would stop at the malt stand mm -hmm. as it was called to get yeah. a malt and a hamburger mm -hmm. and um, if it were crowded Mm -hmm. uh, then you know you were you were subjected to taunts and and that kind of thing and we would get our we, you couldn't go inside you mm -hmm. could just go up to the to a window mm -hmm. and and order and leave yeah so uh, you grew up determined not to have a life of poverty or oppression as you think back why do you think you were able to achieve your goals when so many other people didn't what was different for well, you? Well, you know, uh, as a young girl, mm -hmm. I was deathly afraid of worms. <laughs> and um, Which doesn't sound like that's going to lead to academic no. success, but no, it did, right? No, <laughs> it, it did. I mean, yeah. because uh, I couldn't, my dad had a cotton farm, mm -hmm. and he grew everything we ate, um, mm -hmm. every vegetable, everything. 
and um, cotton and corn, of course, mm -hmm. subsidized his $40 a week salary at mm -hmm. the box factory that he worked at. And uh, one day I was in the fields uh, trying to pick cotton, but I was breaking and bending the stalks mm -hmm. as I went, and I was going too slowly. So my brothers on opposite sides of me were picking cotton, and they were taking the caterpillars off the stalk and putting them on my sack mm -hmm. and my back. And after putting maybe 10 or 15, they told yeah. me to look back. I looked back and I became hysterical. Mm -hmm. And my father, plowing in another field, ran, dropped his plow, ran, mm -hmm. thought I had been bitten by yeah. a snake or something because yeah. I was screaming my head off. Yeah. He gets there and he sees these little worms <laughs> and he says, my mom, get her out of here. Right. <laughs> she is going to lose her mind screaming like that over some little worms. Uh -huh. And so I felt very um, guilty, yeah. I think, about mm -hmm. that because I, I I then had to learn to cook. Mm -hmm. So I cooked as at about nine years old. I was cooking for nine and I had to oh. cook well. Yeah. And so, um, but I delved into books mm -hmm. because I wanted, I, I was able to go to school and I wanted my parents to be Mm -hmm. very proud of me. So mm -hmm. I struggled to make A's and if I made a B, I cried like, mm -hmm. you know, the world was coming to an end. And mm -hmm. um, quite candidly through grade school and high school, um, one of my science professors in high school mm -hmm. um, who had graduated from Tougaloo College uh -huh. said to me, Janice, you are very smart. You continue to make good grades. And if you're interested in going to college, uh, he would help me get there. Mm -hmm. And he and his wife took me to Tougaloo College and mm -hmm. I picked up the applications and applied. And really, yeah. I financed my entire education, both my master's mm -hmm. and my PhD through fellowships, scholarships. Mm -hmm. And uh, working really hard, and working, working two jobs. I worked yeah. really hard. I, mm -hmm. You know, um, after I got to graduate school, six months pregnant, mm -hmm. uh, I had to teach mm -hmm. and then of course I was married to a husband that was basically disengaged mm -hmm. and so I I taught uh, basic communications at the University of Wisconsin mm -hmm. as, a, as a graduate student and then in the evenings I would go to Penny's and clerk mm. for four hours mm -hmm. and um, to make sure that my kids were fed. Mm -hmm. Your parents um, owned their own farm, uh, where a lot of people didn't. They were able just to lease their land. How did that come yes, about? Yes, that, that, well, my dad, uh, uh, my, my grandfather, my mater paternal grandfather, both mm -hmm. my grandparents owned their own land. Mm -hmm. One was in Holden Town and one is in Scott, Janice Scott Ellis. Is, oh, okay. So my dad was a Scott mm -hmm. and his father owned about 150 acres, mm -hmm. and he was able to get that. Um, my grandmother, my paternal grandmother, is a mulatto, as mm. they would call it. Her father was a slave master, mm. and um, at some point in time, uh, she she uh, got 40 acres, mm -hmm. and my my grandfather was able to purchase the adjacent property next to it over time, mm -hmm. and. It made all the difference, quite yeah. candidly, mm -hmm. because by the the my dad wouldn't have been able to join the NAACP, mm -hmm. would not have been able to register people to vote mm -hmm. had he not owned his own land, yeah. and uh, I think that made the difference mm -hmm. uh, to some degree. We still, as kids, had to work the land, yeah. you know, because my dad didn't buy a tractor until we all left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, but. Um, but other kids mm -hmm. uh, in my school had to either work mm -hmm. for the the um, people that they rented their homes yeah. from, mm -hmm. or they had to go to the Delta region mm -hmm. during harvest time, miss school, yeah. and so on. And so I credit uh, my father's uh, lineage mm -hmm. uh, for the land ownership. Mm -hmm. My mother. Uh, parents were staunch in emphasizing education, mm -hmm. even though uh, my my uncle was the only one with college. My mother got about a but year of college. Your mother went to college for a yeah, year. Yeah, for which a year. Is very unusual. In very her unusual. Time. Yeah. And uh, she always would tell me. I think she lived vicariously through me yeah. because she would say, "I want you to go as far as you can go," mm -hmm. and um, and so they emphasized education. Mm -hmm. My my my. Uh, 
uh, paternal grandparents mm -hmm. emphasized land ownership. Do not sell your land, mm -hmm. no matter what. And that has carried over to us. And I have two sons. Mm -hmm. And I say to them, when I'm gone, <laughs> you'd better not sell it. If you do, I'm coming back. <laughs> so, but, yes. but, 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 but did, that, that yeah. made the difference. It did, mm -hmm. it did. Because it also, even though you, your parents weren't able to give you money to go to college, yeah. they were able to allow, you were able to finish school, um, which I'm sure a lot yes. of kids had to drop out at a yes. certain point and earn money. Yes, you know, or, um, or if they, or if they didn't have to, they chose yeah. to. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I, because uh, it was so oppressive there. Mm -hmm. uh, young, 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 uh, adults and mm -hmm. high school students could only look forward to uh, being a maid mm -hmm. or uh, or work in the fields. Mm -hmm. And so many of uh, my sisters and brothers yeah. left to go north to mm -hmm. Chicago mm -hmm. to cause for a better life. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I mean, and, and it's very impressive because ba all of your siblings um, were educated, have yeah. higher education. I mean, well, well, university. Well, yeah. well, well. Um, actually, I'm the only one who 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 graduated from college yeah. and, and earned degrees. But my dad and my mom mm -hmm. uh, fostered such a strong work ethic yeah. in us that mm -hmm. um, I had two brothers mm -hmm. who did not finish high school. Mm -hmm. uh, they both. Um, okay. Were, were able to but they had careers. Oh, had careers. Yeah. Yes, yeah. had careers. Yeah. One worked at the at the as a custodial worker at the University of Chicago for mm -hmm. twenty seven years. Mm -hmm. Bought his own home. Uh, the other mm -hmm. was um, actually started uh, laying pipes mm -hmm. uh, for for uh, people's gas in Illinois. Ah, uh, okay. Became a supervisor, mm -hmm. and the joke in my house was uh, he had all the money, I had all the degrees because he worked <laughs> himself up to be a supervisor mm -hmm. and retire mm -hmm. very well. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we all, uh, all of us, mm -hmm. a were able to earn a good living, no one mm -hmm. on welfare, mm -hmm. no one in jail. Mm -hmm. And my mom would say to me, my mom died last summer at oh. 101. Oh, wow. And um, she uh, would say to me on occasion, oh, if I just would have taken more psychology, I would have, yeah. I would have, you know, learned to um, see this, the, the talent in my children and yeah. push them in this direction. And I would say, Mother, no. seven out of seven. Yeah. You're not, you're, you're, yeah. uh, really, you're batting 100. You've done <laughs> exactly. well. We're, we, we all landed. So You, yeah. you sure did. And I, I mean, I think also it seemed to me from at least what you were describing that your parents, by example, showed you that you could expect that you, with work, you could expect more out of life. Exactly, and yeah. and, and their faith. Mm -hmm. My faith, uh, I'm, I'm thankful for their, the, the values that they, they, that they imparted in me, mm -hmm. and I'm thankful for my faith. Mm -hmm. uh, if it were not for my faith, I yeah. think I could be insane or some, somewhere, some, something, mm -hmm. because I think that helped me manage the tough times in my life. Yeah. And, yeah. and, I, and I've written the book, you know, not so much to say, look at me, but, mm -hmm. but I want it to be a teaching tool mm -hmm. um, for, for women, mm -hmm. for uh, high school girls and young girls, mm -hmm. because I, I try to explain the challenges in my life yes. as a woman, uh, yeah. a teenager, and, and a professional. Yeah. And so for women and blacks and other mm -hmm. minorities, and I, dis I, I developed this discussion guide mm -hmm. for the book for that reason, so that they can as they confront things mm -hmm. that I've confronted and lived through in the last 50 years yeah. during the civil rights mm -hmm. uh, and women's liberations, quote, maturation, so mm -hmm. to speak, is to say, um, these are things we need to consider. These are things mm -hmm. we need to talk about. And I'm hopeful that the discussion guide will be used in individual reflection mm -hmm. as people read the book, but in classes, forums, community mm -hmm. forums, to foster a conversation because we have achieve much but we have a long way to go absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely on every count yes um, you also you uh, had mentioned in your book that one of your your father was active in the NAACP mm -hmm. and registered with um, voter registration you guys came pretty close to danger with crosses being burned on your front oh, yes. lawn I mm -hmm. think you said that happened yes. three times yes yeah yes and then one of your classmates <coughs> father was actually murdered can yes. you tell us about that yes um, and well um, Herbert Lee Sr. Mm -hmm. was the organizer 
mm -hmm. uh, in the community for getting men to go out and canvass and mm -hmm. register people to vote. Mm -hmm. And one day, as he was taking a bale of cotton to the gin in mm -hmm. Liberty, mm -hmm. I, I need to say my dad's farm was between these two towns, Liberty yeah. and Magnolia. Mm -hmm. um, he took his bale of cotton to the Liberty gin mm -hmm. and uh, was confronted by a legislator there. Mm -hmm. And they got into an argument and he was killed. He was shot right then and there. Mm -hmm. And the legislator never was brought to justice. And uh, that was my high school classmate's father. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if, if it, whoever, if you've seen the um, documentary, The Freedom Riders, that mm -hmm. was uh, aired on PBS in, oh, 2011, 2012. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a segment about him mm -hmm. and his life. And now the place where that gin was yeah. is there's a memorial mm -hmm. on, uh, in his name. And then, and there is a restaurant called the Cotton Gin mm. that is operated by a black family, mm -hmm. and I'm happy to say both blacks and white mm -hmm. whites patronize the, yeah. the restaurant. Right, which is good. But it was, uh, you know, as a as a child in hearing about it, um, how how did that news come to your home? Like, what um, what was there um, fear, or who's next, or what well, you well, say? Uh, I think I think the way I felt it was when. Mm -hmm. My mom would get my brothers up mm -hmm. at night. My dad uh, would carpool to work with yeah. one of the neighbors, and mm -hmm. he worked at uh, a box factory making $40 a week. Mm -hmm. And um, my mom would get my brothers up at about 1030 to go to the hill, to the road mm -hmm. uh, from our farm. Our farm was about two blocks off the main mm -hmm. road. and. Uh, for them to wait for him mm. so that no one else would be lying in wait to hurt him. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and I think that was part of the fear of, mm. of, of, uh, of growing up. And we always sort of knew our place yeah. when we were going into the cities and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Had, to, had to accept indignities. You yeah, know. yeah. Um, your first ex experience at college, you said you had a work study our program. Yes. Tell us about that because yes. you were supposed to be working yes. on, in the university. Yes. But yes, I was supposed to be working for um, the psychology professor as mm -hmm. her uh, little assistant, mm -hmm. you know, um, typing uh, yeah. and doing little things in the office. But instead, I was sent to her house uh, to do the laundry, mm -hmm. iron her husband's underwear and their sheets. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I talk about in the book yeah. the 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 vestiges of mm -hmm. uh, slavery and mm -hmm. and skin color and how this country is so uh, in the world really yes. the darker yeah. the skin mm -hmm. the more discriminated you're against that's that's pretty much all over the world mm -hmm. but it happens within uh, ethnic groups yes and and I and I and I put that in the book yeah. because. The dean of the school, uh, mm -hmm. to Blue College at the time, and his wife uh, were African Americans, uh -huh. at, but they were considered fair uh -huh. African Americans, right. as like my like my grandma mm -hmm. mom was, um, uh, you know, mixed race yeah. uh, African Americans, mm -hmm. and and there was a there was there was a, a, a stigma, mm -hmm. you know, I was a black country girl from the farm. Mm -hmm. They were from the east. Mm -hmm. They had migrated there on sabbatical mm -hmm. from an eastern university and stayed. And so I was pretty much their mate. Yeah. Instead yeah. of being the assistant to the right. and they were black. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But here you were a college student. A college student. With really no say though, because you were dependent. No say. Oh yeah. no say. Yeah. I, I I managed to Tuition at that time was like $1,300 a semester. It was yeah. a private school. Yeah. Tougaloo was known for its academic rigor. Mm -hmm. um, many professors from Brown, Yale, mm -hmm. they would come there on sabbatical and stay. Mm -hmm. And so the tuition was very high. And my mom would make it clear to me. She said, I, I want you to go to college, but mm -hmm. we can't afford to, to, to get loans and, right. and uh, or, or we may not be able to. Mm -hmm. But she sent me $5 a month oh. for... Uh, to get um, vanilla floats oh, to study. How sweet. And yeah, yeah. and so, um, you know, but I knew that I had to do work study mm -hmm. to buy my books yeah. and to compensate for 
the the hundred and fifty dollars or whatever it was that the that my scholarships did not cover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I was determined to do it. So I yeah. I earned the underwear and the sheets uh -huh. and still made good grades and wow. kept on trucking, <laughs> as they would say. And then you transferred from there to um, which Millsaps College. Millsaps College. College, Millsaps yeah. College was a predominantly white uh, college, mm -hmm. but still known for its academic rigor. Mm -hmm. And quite candidly, uh, in 1968, mm -hmm. when Martin Luther King was assassinated, mm -hmm. uh, the Tougaloo Choir was at Carnegie Hall at the time. Mm -hmm. And like the rest of the country, we were just devastated. Yeah. And so I thought, after his assassination, what 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 can I do? Yeah. You know what 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 can I do right. to help the movement? So I transferred to Millsaps, mm -hmm. and at the time, uh, Millsaps only had two or three black women on mm -hmm. campus. Mm -hmm. uh, someone had gone there in '65, and I went back and writing the book to find out who that was. And they don't even have a record of the black person. It was a guy who attended there during the summer, mm -hmm. and um, I went there my junior year, beginning yep. my junior year. Mm -hmm. And at the time, there were only um, six girls there in, living in the dormitory. Mm -hmm. And I had a roommate who was dark, like me. Mm -hmm. And one day, the Klan circled our dormitory. And the dorm mother uh, took Lily and mm -hmm. myself. She's mm -hmm. in the book. And she said, you talk about me, you'd better call my name. <laughs> so um, <laughs> we, 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 she took us into her quarters mm -hmm. for safety. Mm -hmm. uh, we were the darker skinned mm -hmm. African American girls there mm -hmm. and she wanted, didn't want any harm to come to us mm -hmm. but the Klan circled our dorm and, and, and during that time uh, Lila and I thought well let's just see what we can do. Mm -hmm. We would go to class and, and, and students would get off the sidewalk you know in order and never make an eye contact. So one day in the cafeteria mm -hmm. we thought okay we're going to sit with other people we're not going to sit alone and eat our lunch today. Right. We cleared 10 tables before people would stop getting up and leaving. Every time you sat at a table, yeah. the Every white time, students would get yeah, up Yeah, the and white leave. students would get mm. up and leave. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but then on the good side, yeah. I had a professor. I, I started there as a math major mm -hmm. and was working, uh, taking abstract algebra mm -hmm. and was working a theorem and had done about 12 pages of calculations, and I was going in a circle. So I mm -hmm. went to the head of the department and said, can I just, can you check my numbers? Mm -hmm. And so they said, he said yes, but he never looked at me. But I had a professor in communications who thought a lot of, mm -hmm. of my speeches and- And encouraged you to go yes, on. Yes, and encouraged me to go yeah. on. Well, uh, your your book, like I said, is fascinating. It's, um, you know, it's always, I had to keep reminding myself this was in 1968 through the 70s yes. that things were different. I grew up in the North, which yes. wasn't perfect, but it was, I don't know, hard, it, it, I just learned a lot from reading your book, and I want to thank well, you thank for you. being here. Thank you. Thank you very much. You have been watching Behind the Pages from the staff of 22 City View. I'm Diane Goshkarian. And thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you for having yeah, me. Yeah, no, like I said, the book is, is quite fascinating. Um, well, thank you. Uh, just sort of the detail that, you know, I got.